Welcome. So today we will be featuring a Captain America Series 1 and 2 cards only deck. I will have a full deck breakdown at the end of the video during the wrap up segment. But otherwise, we will just get started on the climb and see how we do. Are ye worthy? Ugh. It's going to be tough with on the left side. Can you stop, Odin, please? All right, so we are starting at rank 3,878. Let's dive into it. Okay, next up we have Siswai. Let's try to get the Abbey draw. Maybe. We have a four, five, and six play for our later turns, but I'm completely lost on the early turns, of course. So we will just have to wait and see what we draw into. New York is nice to be able to move. So I can get it next turn if they don't play two now. So in all likelihood, I will play my Cosmo left. Yes, so I should get it. I'm curious what deck they have. They got my Onslaught. Mockingbird with no early turns. Interesting. Okay, so we should block if this is an on reveal. Perfect. Now, I should maybe snap into this. I'm going to snap into this. Get down Warpath. And I can also move my cards, which I may end up doing. Move Cosmo mid. That is hilarious. They really wanted my Sunspot gone. <laughs> that seems like a waste of a turn, honestly. So we will play Claw down here, because I'm probably going to slide all my cards middle. And then play Onslaught, in all likelihood. Okay, I can't slide them all middle. Okay, and you figure they have Surfer. So Surfer is two, four, six, sixteen. So I would actually only tie. But then I could win the tiebreaker? Especially if I guess where they're going to play their Surfer. Then I just went outright. Like or subscribe, but only choose one. This actually hedges against a lot of different things. Because I still have my 10 power here. This is 714 middle. I like this play. And if I win, I will tell you why. Perfect. Because it's unpredictable. That is why I like the play. And we tag the Surfer. So actually, if they had played Surfer left... No, they still wouldn't have won. They still wouldn't have won. Because they still would have been plus two middle. They would have tied in White Palace, two, four, six. And then we win by eight with the Warpath. So by moving middle, we actually played around a number of different options they had. And I, believe it or not, I was processing all of those options or a lot of them in my head. Uh, without articulating it. But we we knew they had a discounted Mockingbird because of Mockingbird. And I did say that going into the turn. And the Mockingbird would have was three. Yes. 
So Mockingbird and Surfer are both three. So we know they can put down some power. We know they can add power with Surfer. We know they played their Absorbing Man, which was not, in my mind, that wasn't a great play, but uh, that's that's fine. They they hated Sunspot, so. So yeah, by doing this, we spread out our power across all three lanes, challenge them to play and put power in all three lanes, and you are just in a strong position. Onslaught Claw really enabled that. Warpath is a very underused card. But also, you see we got 16 into an empty lane. That's crazy. And so when you compare that with Warpath, the Claw Onslaught combo is just fantastic. Okay, next up we have Maupo. Hold. Nico, this could be destroy, bounce, it could be any number of things. This tower, continue to hold. I need to figure out where I want to put my power. I think I will put Ebony Maw here and Ant-Man mid. Ebony Maw at 12 isn't anything to scoff at. And I can get more power with Claw Spectrum. I will play Cosmo because I am afraid of any ongoing that they might do. We we blocked their wog. I think I just play Claw. And we're abandoning left. And then I play Onslaught middle. So even if they only play one card here, and that's Sean. Okay, and an Odin doesn't win. Because I'm just going to play Onslaught. But go ahead, prove me wrong, Malpo. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Destroy me. Put me out of my misery from this uh, brutal challenge. So with me playing series one and two, hey, look at that. With me playing series one and two card decks only, my rank is in the high infinite. Like we're talking top 5,000, 4,000, whatever it is. Uh, the level of competition I'm going up against is brutal. It is brutal. So if you are below infinite, you should, if you apply the strategy that I'm walking you through, you should have a better time. Now, it might be more difficult for you because you're still learning the game. But ultimately, as long as that piece comes, it's not the deck's problem. This deck can compete. It can compete with the top players. I'm not doing great at snapping and retreating this uh video but ultimately it can you just have to get real good at snapping and retreating when to do that your opponent's decks the strengths of your decks and when to snap when to not after i snapped it with the cosmo and wong they should have just left but they gave me an extra cue so take those when you get them we were in a super strong position and the Onslaught doubles the Ant-Man bonus, doubles the Claw bonus over here. So we were going to add quite a bit of power middle and another eight power right. So we were just in a fantastic position. And even if they shawned right, we still would have had 16 power here. And Sean would have dropped the Jeff's power to... They would have only 12 power. The three from Sean and the... 10 from Jeff, 13. So they would have 13 power here to my 16. So we were just positioned very strongly. Look at that. Good old coach. Westview is the first location. My opening hand is okay. 
There's an argument to be made that Westview is an unknown location since it doesn't actually reveal in turn, until turn four. I will still play Sunspot, right? So just keep that in mind if you play into Westview, if you are risk averse, you want to avoid Westview. I mean, sending over, sending over the Ebony Maw isn't, isn't the worst thing. Now, I kind of wish I would have played my Sunspot there last turn. That way I could soak and get just enough. But this is okay play. Getting eight power there isn't nothing. But we can do that with Claw. Assuming Westview doesn't stop us completely. There is Claw. So we will play Captain America left. Oh man, where's my Cosmo? Assemble. No Cosmo for me? No Cosmo for me it is. Continue to load up left. My next turn, turn five. Boy, I really need Cosmo. Or do I? Maybe I don't. With Claw and then Onslaught? Let's find out. We know they can't play mid, so they only have three spots to play. Oh, that was a mistake, yeah. Yeah, and then I just play Onslaught. I don't have priority, so Cosmo at this point does nothing. But I get enough power. Middle. And I'm not going to do the math, but I should have enough power left. Are ye worthy? But we shall find out. Ugh. It's gonna be tough with on the left side. Can you stop, Odin, please? Behold my mighty hand. There we go. Look at that. Victory. Got a solid 8 cube victory. With some creative play with the Ebony Maw. We of course abandon right with the broods. And we beat a Wong Odin nonsense type deck, all because of Onslaught, who I mistakenly left out of my previous series one and two ongoing deck video. But uh, thanks to this user right here, or viewer, uh, they reminded me that Onslaught is a series one card. So. I had to make a new video, throw in Captain America, and this speaks to why Onslaught is fantastic. He doubled Captain America's bonus, he doubled Ant-Man's bonus, he doubled Claw, and it's just a lot of power, 34, and then 16 in another lane. Beautiful. Okay, so that's where we will end it. My rank is 3,752. I don't know if I showed it, but I had a horrible 8 cube loss uh, while I was recording. Uh, I also just ended with a 8 cube victory. So this deck really can surprise people with the Onslaught and Claw play. And again, Onslaught just doubles everything. So let's get into the deck breakdown. Okay, so here is the deck. To start, we have Sunspot. That's good if you need to skip turns. Nice, good early play. You can also pair Sunspot in a Ebony Maw lane, just further build that up. Maybe you don't need to have Claw get extra power into that lane. We have Ant-Man who works with Onslaught very nicely when you fill up your lane. Onslaught, of course, doubles Ant-Man's bonus, so plus eight, which is fantastic. 
we have Nightcrawler. I didn't get to show it in the video, but what Nightcrawler allows you to do is play Nightcrawler to a different lane. So now all three of your lanes have one card in them or, or multiple cards, whatever, but all three of your lanes have at least one card in them. Now when you play Warpath, Warpath is five power. And then at the end of the game or when you need it, you can move Nightcrawler away from the lane that he's in, abandon that lane completely. And now Warpath gets that plus five power and you might be able to catch your opponent off guard with that little maneuver. We have Ebony Maw, who just is a lot of power. Honestly, seven is a lot for a one cost. And it also tempts your opponent to only play eight, nine, 10 power there. But you can get more power into there, into his lane with Nightcrawler, with Claw, and with Spectrum, who, funny enough, I did not do not remember playing this uh, gameplay. So maybe you might be able to slot her out for another ongoing card, potentially. Or a Sean, a Rogue, maybe. There is Colossus. He comes in handy with certain locations that are that destroy your cards. Uh, he also gets a buff from Spectrum. He gets a buff from Captain America, which is nice. The newly buffed Captain America is fantastic, giving plus two to your ongoing cards. I'm pretty sure, yes. Giving plus two to your ongoing cards and most of your cards in this deck are ongoing. And that can be doubled up with Onslaught if you play them in the same lane. Now Captain America gives plus four to your ongoing cards in that lane. We have Cosmo, fantastic tech card. Uh, it's very effective into Wong, of course, which you got to see. And also effective into Destroy if you're running into that. There is Warpath, which we just covered uh, a little bit ago. Iron Man. Iron Man just can get you good power. And especially if you can get Iron Man down early, being able to play, let's say, a Cosmo, Iron Man, Claw, and Onslaught in the same lane is fantastic. Speaking of getting down Iron Man early, if you have Ravona, who was just in a recent spotlight, she is fantastic in this deck. Maybe you exchange her out for Colossus. And now you legitimately can get down Iron Man on turn four. You play Ravona in a lane, and then you load up your lane with your other lane with Cosmo, Iron Man, Claw, and Onslaught. Very possible. So keep that in mind. We have Claw. You saw him put in work this gameplay. Fantastic card. Plus eight to another location. Onslaught in that same lane. Plus 16 to the other location. A lot of power. We have Spectrum, gives plus two to your ongoing cards. We have a lot of ongoing cards. And Onslaught, I don't need to say anything more about him. He's just fantastic in this deck, as you got to see. So, uh, do I advise this deck if you have better, uh, higher series cards? No. But if your collection level is limited, this is and can be a very effective deck to climb. I definitely climbed. I forgot to verbally mention it, but I'm sure my editor put in how many ranks we climbed, which we, I'm pretty sure we climbed. So this deck can have success if you have a limited collection. And again, remember, I am playing the top players who, if you are below infinite, they just are not going to be the, the caliber of players that I had to face with this deck. So in theory, you should be a little bit more successful as long as you properly snap, as long as you properly retreat and just manage your cubes. And until next time, take care.